Welcome to the Cinepax Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Casey, and in this episode, I sit down and talk with my good friend, Josh Fields from Hatch 86 Films. This is a shorter episode. We cover a lot of different things. Uh, People ask us a lot of questions from Instagram on ways to level up their music video production and some specific questions in there, how you can utilize this unique lens for some really cool looking product shots. If you guys enjoy this episode, feel free to leave it a review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And make sure to go check out Cinepax. We have tons of free and paid effects for you guys over there to use in any of your videos. Here's episode 36. What's up, Josh? Welcome to the Cinepax podcast. This is not your first time on. How you doing? Good, how are you? Doing good, man. Um, first time on the Cinepax podcast. First time on the Cinepax podcast. Yeah, Josh, is, how many episodes have you been on before on the Wolf Talk podcast? I think three. Yeah, there's like three. We did the first one, so if you want like a deeper dive into uh, Josh's background, how he started Hatch 86 Films, all the details of that, go check out that episode. I think it's like episode four or five. It's pretty early. Um, That's on all the podcast apps. And then there's a few other ones where we give like some tips and tricks. So yeah, what have you been up to recently? How has uh, quarantine affected your works lately? Uh, It was slow for a while. I was, you know, taking it super serious, not, not working at all, just staying in the house. And then uh, in the, in that first initial time, I was like doing product videos in a little home studio I built. Yeah. And I don't know, just you can only do that for so long before you start going stir crazy. So then I started like accepting some some videos and keeping it super low key, like just me and the artist, and then maybe one other crew member. Yeah, I feel like when I feel like our job is one where you can maybe get away with like shooting and like still being safe especially when like the lockdown was pretty strict just because you can stay a distance away from like an artist or something like that um but yeah i don't know how do you feel about people going out and like shooting quite a bit when the lockdown was still happening because i mean i'm sure you saw a lot of people still going out do you yeah feel about that uh to me it's kind of it was kind of sketchy to me in the beginning and it was just i don't know frustrating because i did want to go out there but at the same time i was trying to you know be safe and responsible so yeah definitely just being careful and taking precautions on set just limiting the amount of people that are going to be on your sets i think is like a pretty good thing that you can do um but so you said you've been shooting at home and videos and following your instagram you see you shoot these crazy at home videos uh using the popular lens what lens is that that you use for the people who don't know it's the Loa t- uh, 24 millimeter probe lens, uh, macro probe lens. Yep. It's so it's, crazy. you know, the only, actually I've just seen another one, but it's pretty much the only of its kind because traditionally macro is zoomed in like a mm-hmm. hundred millimeters or somewhere around there. So it's just a completely different look being wide angle and macro. Yeah, exactly. Cause like we've done, we've done macro shots with like a hundred millimeter and like that stuff's cool for like like close-ups on like jewelry or uh i think you maybe used it on that uh filthy rich video the my shit video did we use that oh maybe i think you got one shot of like the rolls royce the little yeah yeah pendant thing but um yeah so it's definitely crazy that it's like a wide lens of 24 and you can focus so close yeah tell me a little bit uh some features about that lens that make it cool for like shooting like product shots like some cool uses you found with it so far um well if you've seen it it looks like a you know a shotgun barrel or whatever so you can do things that you can't normally do like you can push through tight spaces that you know any lens that's like any bigger than that would not fit through it so that's a like a cool look you can do um if you go into like if you go into something and it's a dark space, it has a ring light on it, mm-hmm. so you're able to to use that. But it's kind of it's kind of finicky. It's I'm tricky. not yeah. yeah, I'm not huge on it because it's hard to match the outside light to the way it's going to be lit inside of something with the ring light. Mm-hmm. And it's also I feel like it's a weird color temperature. It's like somewhere in the middle, and I can't figure out where it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the. Uh, the whole barrel is waterproof so you could even you know dunk it in water or whatever yeah that's sick yeah, that's cool um yeah we used the i hired you to come film with it on that uh 
chicken nugget shoot we did. Did we get sauce on the lens? I don't remember if you let me get sauce on. I don't think you let me. Mm, I don't think so. This right. I think I wanted to, but yeah. Oh, snap. Yeah, I got mine up there. Yeah, it was a cool shoot, but yeah, I learned a lot about that lens just using it that one day. It was pretty crazy. Just like uh, everyone thinks it's super easy to use just seeing it on Instagram. But mm -hmm. there's a lot more that goes into using that lens, whether it's the focusing distance, the depth of field's ins insane on that because you're so close to these subjects, the depth of field is so shallow. And what f-stop is that lens? Yeah, the lowest it goes is 14. For so, f-14, that's insane. So you need a lot of light, but then it's still a shallow depth of field when you are at f-14. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't even think even if the technology was there to make that thing like even like an f4 yeah it wouldn't i even, can't even the the depth of field would be like a millimeter like yeah it would be nothing. i don't even know it's already super shallow yeah because that's what i was afraid of is like uh because i was going to do some 3d camera tracking like shots of like having uh i'm sue and cool john like tracked onto the sauce packets i was afraid of as soon as we like push in or out that they were gonna be out of focus right away and I was gonna have to like blur them and I was mm -hmm. like, I don't wanna have to do all that. We, I think we ended up filming it on my GH5S cause it has better low light performance. And I felt like the colors match that versus the Sony a little bit better. Match your red that we used on the green screen. Did we use yours? We used my GH5, yeah. With a speed booster? Mm-hmm. Mm. The GH5S, yeah. So. So yeah. I guess that what does that make the the f stop at that point? Oh, it's like uh, I don't know. I forgot. The I think we even it. stopped down just a little bit too, mm -hmm. because it, uh, just the depth of field. But um, yeah, that's one thing because like talk a little bit about like the pros and cons of like why it's kind of difficult to film like with a red with that lens. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but yeah. Well, yeah, the, just like you shouldn't go any higher than. 800 ISO on on most reds unless you have the Gemini so it's just hard to get the amount of light um, recently though I started because I always diffuse the light for product shots yeah and I started trying no diffusion I just use the the dish that comes with a 300d and it actually doesn't look that bad with hard light yeah and you're able to get more light on it since is that the diffused. 300d mark II? yeah you're gonna need that 600D for these product shots next. Yeah, no, you could diffuse the 600D probably, and that would yeah. be pretty dope. Yeah, it'd be fire. But yeah, so yeah, definitely like with the red, like because most of the time on a red, you can't go any higher than like what, like 800 ISO, or I mean, I guess you can go a little higher on the new ones, but still like you, like that's just like base, and like I don't know, you probably even need more light at that point. Yeah, and then slow motion on a red is like yeah. out the window exactly with so the probe lens. yeah which is just crazy so i can't imagine how much light you would actually need to like produce something like this yeah i, f I follow one guy on instagram that shoots with it a lot and he uses like hmis to yeah. light the set so and then you know being in that confined space with the hmi like it already gets hot in my little studio with with the led bulbs so yeah i can't imagine being in there with that what are you working on right now? I saw you shooting that promo for um, uh, the whiskey company. Oh, yeah. They, uh, it was right there. Um, they just released a new, or it's, I guess it's, it's not even released yet, uh, a new whiskey bottle that's like um, they put it in like wine barrels after, so it takes on some of the, the oaky wine yeah. flavor. Um, but I think my stuff is like the official images that are going to come out when they release it cool i got a, i got a bunch of questions we'll just go through them all yo Ant wants to know first camera you started filming with Ooh, like first 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 and then we'll go um, first it's actually the i think did you just buy a new um high eight camera yeah it's right there it's that's that is the camera is that the right one yeah that's it that's it i'm gonna grab it yeah that's literally the Sony Handycam or whatever, and it's got yeah. the night vision. The night vision. Let me see. Yep. Uh, it's mine was a slightly different model, but like pretty yeah. much that that is what I started filming with. Yep. Back in uh, two thousand 
two, two thousand probably. What were filming you filming skateboarding? on? That? Skateboarding, yeah. Skateboarding, yeah. Sick. And then, what was your first like DSLR camera for like music video, corporate video? Type um, one? that was the Canon sixty D. Sixty D, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, the crazy thing about that high eight camera is now it's kind of expensive to find now. I feel like, mm-hmm. cause like uh, my cousin, someone like gave it to him, and then he wasn't even gonna use it, and I knew it was sick. I was like, I want that, so I bought it off him. I paid, I think I paid him like what it was on eBay, or a little less, but I think they're like eighty, ninety dollars on eBay right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Cool. Uh, stacked. Uh, D Roblin wants to know what are some tips to get more clientele or uh, we'll start with that. What are some tips to get some more clientele? Just be active on social media. Like if you have skill, like showcase it and yeah. the clients will come. Yeah. I think putting a hundred percent into all videos you do, even if you don't, you know, it's not like the most popping artist. Even if you put a hundred percent in that video, on set and in editing, delivery, communication, all that, I think will all come together and get you more clientele overall. Yeah. Because they're gonna see you're putting in that effort. And I think that's one thing that's gotten you, I feel like you have a lot of clientele. I feel like you're always shooting and you put a lot of work into your videos. Yeah, then it always like, if, if you're gonna have to like eat into the budget as far as what you take home, to make the video a little bit better and it's something you can put on your reel like in the long run that's going to pay off you know yeah i think yeah i think that's the biggest thing that i see still today see a lot of people not doing who are bigger than me but they're also like they i would expect them for how long they've been doing this to be way bigger because i don't i think they've just been taking the check every time and they haven't Mm -hmm. reinvested to get to that next next level you know yeah yeah i see a lot of people and i can tell they don't reinvest in themselves because they've been using the same equipment for three four years yeah and it's not even that like i don't think you have to like cop the latest equipment like that's not what i'm saying as well i think it's even just going as far as like hiring someone you know like hiring someone to come Mm -hmm. out and do lighting hiring a dp is what's really going to help level you up just so you have that piece of work that you can show someone you could still keep rocking your sony whatever you know but you could also have that piece of work be like hey like this is what happens when you give me x amount you know yeah so yeah that's a way to and then there was a second part to that question he said uh how do you get your foot in the door with established artists probably the best way is to offer them a free video um you need to first have good work because a free video doesn't matter if it's not good um so you know first first get your work to a good place and then reach out to whoever you want to work with and show them your work offer them a free video and then from there you can start making money from that artist or then like take that and go to other artists and be like look i've shot for so and so Mm mm-hmm you know, want to want to shoot a video. Yeah, and I think also like another way that you can like get in with established artists is features. So maybe if you can't get to like, let's say there's an established artist who's like all the way up here, but then maybe you can get someone who's a little less established. But you know what I mean, like someone who's not as like high tiers where you want to to be. You can also mm-hmm. like kind of work your way in through features and stuff. You know, I feel like there's that. I don't or, think that's. You don't that's think just so? not con- no that is but it's not you can't really control that you no know? you can't control that but I think well actually I don't know like I've I've kind of like pre visualized opportunities like that um, oh yeah for sure but you know like I don't know like you see like someone you know that you shot for before has shot a video with let's just say Lil Skies right and then or like he no he has a song with Lil Skies he just dropped and you hit him up right away like hey I'll shoot that for free. And like maybe this person's maybe not little skies, you know what I mean? But like someone like a little bit bigger than that other artist, like the next tier up, he gets like a really good feature. So you hit him up like, hey, I'll do that video for free, like, um, and they all they'll obviously know like, yeah, it's because I have so and so on the song. But at least you get a be on set, impress that person, and then have that person in your reel for the feature, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think that's one way, and like kind of like a little growth hack, I would say. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you just I gotta mean, make sure that you're. I mean, you just did a video like that with. Uh, it hasn't dropped yet. Um, 
the Cap G video. It has, I mean, it has Cap G on it. That's pretty big. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying those were your intentions, but like, the video has Cap G on it, and like, that's a pretty big artist, you know. And, yeah, it's also hard to if you're really invested in the video, directing it and and whatnot, to network at the same time. Yeah. Because like Cap G's manager was there, I briefly talked to him throughout the day, but like I didn't have enough time to be like, yo, like. I'd love to work. Like I was more yeah. focused on the shoot at hand instead of you know the the next play. Yeah, but I think that also kind of helps too because people will see how invested you are in it and like how hard you work. Uh, Franco Photos MBS wants to know: Is it true you got into filming videos by recording? Okay, he reposted. <laughs> is it true that you started getting? Uh, oh, you got into it by filming skate videos. Yep. Oh no, nope. You gotta go listen to the whole podcast. <laughs> Have you filmed any skate videos recently or no? Nope. No, you've been skating or no? Uh, no. What about I the just... boosted board? barely have time for it i haven't even rode that in a while i'll take it no you come on you cannot man. ride that bus i ass. tried i know uh vante visions wants to know how you met e40 how did i initially meet him uh the filthy rich right now remix featuring e40 and too short mm-hmm. um met him there and you know he found out that i live in pleasanton which is right near where he lives so i was close and then uh I think I didn't work with him for a whole year, and then he hit me up to record a bottle signing for his tequila at Bevmo. So I filmed that and did a little edit, and then uh, still trying to get a video with him. Yeah, you know, I know. His it's song, been close. not a feature. Yeah, you got to get a 40 video soon. All right. Julie wants to know, uh, what have you been – or uh, I can't read, man. What have your – no, people just can't type. What's been your, what's been your favorite projects using the probe lens? Where some of your favorite, yeah. The favorite project using the probe lens. Yeah, or just your favorite shots. Probably the Pathwater. The Pathwater shots. was pretty sick. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it helps if you have a product and there you have a lot of it. It makes you know for a better shot as opposed to just yeah. one bottle or one whatever it is in the scene. Yeah, and it was I cool because path water so. It was cool because we kind of built like a little set of like path waters around it, which was pretty cool. A path of path waters. And then it, I like the one shot like where we came out of like the uh, the little hole, the little bottle mm-hmm. hole. That was pretty fire. Hitting the mystery. That took all three of us, right? Yeah, with Spencer. Yeah. One person was pulling back. I was misting. I don't know mm-hmm. what the other person was doing. Maybe I was filming behind the scenes. I don't remember. Um, cool. She also wants to know. Where do you see your career going in five to ten, five and then ten years? I don't know. Hopefully, like as far as music videos go, just working with bigger and bigger artists. Um, you know, working with with bigger brands. You know, I've started working with a few, but you know, I want to keep growing that, and you know, maybe not be like someone's in-house videographer for a brand, but be like a brand's go-to person for whenever they need a video. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be sick. Yeah, I definitely felt like last year, the beginning of this year, you're doing like a lot of more like corporate work, which is pretty cool just for like brands and whatnot. So Mm -hmm. is that something you're trying to keep up? Yeah, it's definitely as long as it's, you know, fun. Like I just I don't want to get to the point where it's, you know, like mundane and it's not fun to shoot. Yeah. And I'm shooting for the paycheck. Yeah. So it's it's nice to have like a middle ground where it's still fun, but, you know, it's also a good paycheck. A good check, yeah. Where, yeah. For sure. Um, Susie Made It wants to know, has making videos changed how you watch movies? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, What's the most my, wife, yeah. my wife hates watching stuff with me because I'm always, I'm either like stopping and rewinding to like check out something that I saw and missed or like analyzing. Like sometimes like I'll watch a whole scene and like whatever the actors were saying like goes over my head because i was just looking at the lighting or the cinematography yeah so it's is there a recent example that you can recall where you um i don't know maybe like ozark ozark yeah yeah there was like there was a scene where initially i thought it was a drone that was like coming down from the water up to this boat and then 
stayed on the actors while they had a conversation. Yeah. And then they pulled off on the boat, but then I realized it was a crane, and I, I heard it on a podcast, too, that it's, it was okay. like a, a 20 foot or something techno crane yeah. that they had on a boat. That's crazy. So it was super high in the air and looked like a drone shot, and it comes down like right on the boat. Damn. From they were probably they probably started the shot like a hundred yards away. That's crazy. And then they just landed on them. Sometimes I wish that I didn't know about like making videos, and like I could just enjoy like movies without like overthinking everything. Oh yeah, what did mm-hmm. I just watch? Uh, what's the name of that one movie uh, that just dropped on Netflix? Extraction extraction yeah because like that movie was fire but like i was really just like looking to where they would hide takes in Um, yeah like like when they went behind the bumper of the car i'm like oh they hit a cut right there you know Mm -hmm. um so i was like man i kind of wish i didn't know that because i'd just be so immersed in this you know so i don't know and it was still good like it's not like it was a bad movie it was just i just want to see where they hid the cuts uh, Spencer wants to know how many white claws have you drank during lockdown? <laughs> uh, too many to count. Too many white claws to count. Uh, SPNZ Visions wants to know: uh, Was there ever a big impact that almost made you want to stop making, stop filmmaking? I don't think so. Maybe just like in the in the beginning when when I couldn't like get clientele and i was still working like a regular a regular job for all of my income yeah it was just frustrating because like i knew i had the passion or whatever and like looking back i i didn't have the skill but i felt like i did at the time yeah um but it was just frustrating like ready to do this for a living and not being able to yeah so i was just almost ready to give up and get like a normal 95 yeah I can feel that. Yeah, I feel like the only time where I have done that is like coming from like high school to college where I basically did stop because I was like, oh, I don't have any more classes I'm taking. And then I kind of just stopped and then I knew I wanted to do it. So then I picked back up, but nothing that ever made me like want to stop, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, even if I were to like, stop doing music videos like let's just say i get fed up with it i'd still be making something i'd just change lanes you know i'm still gonna Mm -hmm. do something that involves like creating in general why do you direct versus dp producer or any other roles on set well a lot of the times i am all those roles um you know a lot of times i still am actually shooting um i'm always producing i've never had a producer yeah. So I'm technically always producing. Um, but I don't mind doing all any of that by itself, too. It's just if someone wants to hire me for that, I'm more than willing. Like, I was actually supposed to be DPing a, a music video today. So. Okay. Yeah. You know, I like it all. I just, I think yeah. the only thing I would not want to do is be, like, an editor full-time. Like, any of those yeah. other positions I could do f- yeah. full-time. Like, I don't need to be a director but you would do producing full time mm, no not full time you just said yeah <laughs> what? a good amount i'll do it if you know you would do you a good I mean? amount of, I, I couldn't do it i wouldn't want to do that i feel like it's like really boring i don't know i, I like mean it's, it's nice just to mix it up every once in a while to have like you know one yeah. or two of those a month i don't know yeah, I don't know. I took on an editing gig not too recent or pretty or a few months ago, but like just made me kind of realize like, yeah, I couldn't be like a full time editor. Like, I don't know. It's just too much. I don't want to. I'm already inside editing enough. I don't want to be inside even more like editing other people's stuff. And I feel like it's hard to get passionate about other people's projects that you don't care about. Yeah. With the editing. I mean, if it's a cool project, yeah, I'm down, but that's how I kind of feel. Uh, Jace Elliott wants to know figuring out your rate and building a team. Um, so I guess that's like three questions. How did you figure out your rate? I guess just like initially when I was uh, used to work in the restaurant industry, and I was you know transitioning out of that into to shooting more and then full time. I just wanted to at least make what I was making there in video. Yeah. Um, so I just broke down basically what I was making hourly and kind of like built that into my rate, you know, if like, you know, it's a six hour shooting day or whatever. 
um, you know, and then as you as you progress and grow, then you just gotta essentially give yourself a higher hourly rate, and then that just becomes what your day rate is. Kind of compare um, people who who you think you're kind of similar to, as far as like in your area of like skill level as well, like you're producing equal level videos. Um, maybe just ask them what their rates are if you're cool with them, you know? Just so you know, you're kind of like on the same level. Um, yeah, if yeah, you're, if you're cool with them, but I've them. never, you know, I've never asked like a random I mean, director what they charge. I mean, I feel like me and you, our rates were kind of like rising at the similar times, mm -hmm. like a few months ago. I'd be like, oh, like, what are you charging right now? You know, I'm like, oh, I've been charging this, but just to turn away those people you know i don't know i feel like yeah amongst your peers i wouldn't hit up some random director that i yeah. don't know like hey what i can you charge kinda, it, bro yeah i can kind of tell what other people's rates are too because an artist will hit me up and then be like oh man this is this is all i have to work with and i'm like oh sorry that's like it's a lot less than what our videos start at yeah and then i'll see so and so shooting a video for that guy and i'm like all right like i know what you're shooting videos for yeah so yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Um, so there were like three questions in this one. Uh, building a team. Um, how do you build a team? I think that's his question. Yeah, I think probably social media, just like you know, in your area, seeing other people's work. Like that's that's how we found each other. Yeah. Just seeing what each other's work was like, and then you know, from there, then you can like do word of mouth, like. You know, you meet this guy and he's like, oh, I got so-and-so. He does he does lighting really good, mm -hmm. whatever. And then bring him on, give him a chance. and Also, yeah, I think just going on to other sets as well or helping out other people is a good way mm -hmm. to build a team as well because, I don't know, you just meet more people. Like, that's how you met Andy, Andy, and that's how I met Andy is through mm -hmm. your set when I just went out and helped you. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, cool. And he's yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. Another note, like if you're you know trying to get on people's sets and coming out, you're not you're not just like there trying to like get a job with that director or whatever. Because there's other people on set that are seeing you work too, and like yeah, coming out for free on that one job could lead to like so many different opportunities for sure. Um, and then last question, he says, "How are you continuing to work right now?" Let's dig into that a little bit. Let's talk about ways that you can continue to stay busy during these lockdown times where you technically shouldn't be shooting right now or shooting as bigger videos uh what are some ways that you've continued to work uh me personally so i've been doing like the the product video uh with the probe lens and you know regular lenses too yeah um drone footage because that's just you you and the drone you can go out and you know, shoot a city, shoot a landscape, whatever. And what do you do with that footage? Uh, I put myself up on Dissolve.com. It's a stock stock footage website, so you get a monthly check of whatever you sell. Mm -hmm. um, and on that same note, you can shoot other types of stock footage. Like, if you don't have a drone, you can just shoot handheld stuff, whatever. Like, if you are living with someone during this quarantine like you can film them doing something as simple as taking a sip of a coffee mm -hmm. and stuff like that sells yep you I know just as long as a, a shot well don't just i sold a uh, i sold a i sold a stock <laughs> <laughs> i sold a stock footage clip this morning i love waking up i sell on a site called black box um i woke up and i saw how much i make 45 bucks off a clip of the Golden Gate Bridge that I shot mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like two years ago. Sick. I was like, hell yeah. But um, yeah, stock footage is a cool one. And now's a good time too. I feel like, like especially now to stay busy, I feel like finish all your edits. Like you should have all your edits done. You know what I mean? You should like get to the point like where all your client edits are done and then you can kind of do other things, yeah. you know? Um, like go through your hard drives for stock footage. You can edit a reel if you didn't edit one in the, for 2019, you know, or update your reel with some footage that you may mm -hmm. have shot. Um, what else? What, what other ways have you been? What I haven't, have I haven't been doing it yet. I'm going to soon, but just writing treatments. Yeah. 
and it doesn't have to be for a specific artist. You can just have a general concept and just hmm. bang out treatments, and then you'll have this catalog of treatments. And when the right artist or song comes along, you're like, oh, that fits this one that I wrote. Yeah, and then you know, and you could even tweak it a little bit and, too. Yeah, that's a cool but idea. I, I, I kind of been doing that in my head. I've been like coming up with some concepts, but I need to get them down on paper. You remember all those? <laughs> no, I am, dude. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, I think that's a cool idea too because you can also like write a treatment around like a specific location, and then like you know like let's say you find this sick ass peer space that you've been wanting to use. You're like, oh, like I want like I don't know like they're gonna be on this roof, and then the you know you have this whole concept, and then when you find the right song, you can totally. And then that mm-hmm. also speeds up your work process a little bit. So like, so and so sends you a song, and you're like, you could even write a new treatment, and you can even send that old one. They might like that one better, you know. Just I mean, technically, like, watching shows is in this industry is like good for you. You know, if you're if you're yeah. watching it critically, you're not just watching some crap shows. You know, you're watching like good stuff, and you're studying it, like we were talking earlier. Because I've already yeah. like. I've already came up with some ideas because I had edits to finish during this time and like I watched some stuff and kind of implemented it into like the color grade or whatever. Um, Last question. Uh, Crate Media wants to know at what point do you know you should invest in a cinema camera over a mirrorless slash DSLR? Well, a mirrorless DSLR you should just have like almost right off the bat at this point if this is what you're doing because... You can get a used one for pretty cheap. Like, what is like a Sony A sixty three hundred? It's like like seven hundred bucks. I don't even bucks. think it's that much. I'll look it up while you keep talking. So yeah, you should almost immediately have something. Um, even if you could just borrow, or I guess you're not owning it at that point. But yeah, you should at least have something because. Well, let's say like he, you already own a DSLR. When should you upgrade from that? Like what? Uh, to like a cinema camera, like you said. Camera. Yeah, five fifty for a A sixty three. Um, I would say well, you know, at first find someone that does have it, and so you have it available when people need that, and you can either rent it from them or hire them to DP with their camera. And initially, it's going to be like few and far between that you're going to get clients with that need. And eventually it'll get to a point where you're like, oh man, I've been, I've been hiring this guy like five times a month with his camera. Yeah. Like I can buy one myself and it'll financially make sense. For sure. Yeah. I think also it depends what you're trying to do. If you're trying to direct, maybe you don't ever want a cinema camera, you know? Um, but maybe you're trying to be a DP and maybe you just want to shoot videos for other directors. Maybe it's a good idea to invest in one early on, you know? Um, but I think that also depends too on like, you can even still at that point, you can still rent one, uh, off a share grid or a rental house or anything like that. So, um, and there's also cheaper cinema cameras out there. I feel like you can get pretty close to the red look, um, or any other cinema camera, like, spending i don't know anywhere like five to ten thousand dollars now i feel like like there's all these like Mm -hmm. new cameras coming out like yeah so what do you got planned coming up here in the next few months as things are opening you got more shoots planned or what do you plan on doing uh yeah i got a couple shoots planned Uh, i have one next week um it's a pretty it's gonna be a big video but it's not a big production i'm keeping it small and then I have another one next month, which I'm not sure how it's going to work, but it's supposed to be a pool party. So I don't know if that's going <laughs> to yeah. work out in time. It's like literally one month from right now. Social distancing pool party. Yeah, I'm going to film the whole I'm going to film the whole thing with my drone. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Just in the parking lot, in the garage, in the driveway, mm-hmm. just like on the other side. That'd be sick. Is there any people could check you out on Instagram? I'm gonna link that down below. Is there anything else you want people to go do or check you out? I don't know. I guess if uh, if you live in the Bay Area and you need any of the equipment we talked about, I rent all my stuff on ShareGrid. Yeah. So you can check out my ShareGrid. Um, just Hatch eighty six on ShareGrid. Search yep. it in the Bay Area. You'll find it. Um, 
got lights, cameras, lenses, everything. So mention Cinepax and get a discount on the Pro Lens. <laughs> yeah, Tyler will uh, mail you the rebate. Yeah, I'll mail you the rebate. Mail and rebate. Got you. Uh, but no, yeah, if you guys definitely want to check out the Pro Lens, he's got that up on there. It's definitely a cool lens to uh, play around with. You definitely need a lot of light. Um, it's fun though. You get some really cool shots. But yeah, cool. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. We definitely got to do another one in the future. I want to do some more with like more people as well. Have like more of a conversation would be pretty tight to talk to more directors and stuff like that. So we'll definitely do that in the future. But yeah, go check out the old episodes with Josh. Bunch of value in those as well. Thanks for watching. Peace.